Hello, my name is Simona Millam and I'm your Microsoft Office trainer. And in this introductory nugget, I'd just like to cover a few practical details to make sure that you do get the most from this Outlook 2016 course. So first of all, I am going to be assuming that you are using Outlook with an Exchange or an Office 365 account, so probably in, in a business environment. Now that doesn't mean that you can't follow this course if you are using Outlook with, for example, a Hotmail account, but there'll just be one or two things that won't work quite the same way. So don't be surprised if you are using a Hotmail account rather than an Exchange or an Office 365 account if things work ever so slightly differently, but hey, you can still follow the course. But the next thing to be aware of is, ah, Outlook does come in lots of different flavors. So we do need to make sure that you are using the right flavor of Outlook to be able to follow this course. So basically, if you acquired Outlook as part of the 2016 versions of Office Professional Plus or Office Standard, then you will be absolutely fine. That would be absolutely perfect to follow everything that I'm going to cover on this course. And it's the same with many of the Office 365 plans. Now, I haven't listed all of the Office 365 plans on this screen because there are quite a lot of them. But just make sure that the plan you're using does include the full Office applications. So, for example, E1 does not, whereas E3, E4 and E5 do include the full Office applications. And then towards the bottom of my list here, if you're using Office Online, so that would be the browser-based version of Outlook, then that is a different product. So no, I would say that would not be suitable for using to follow this course. And it's the same if you're using Outlook acquired through Office for the Mac. Again, that's a different product. So I would say, mm, no, not really. That wouldn't help you when following this course. So having got the right flavor of Outlook, what I would really love is that if you could click along with me and actually learn the features as I'm showing them to you on this course. And you've got a couple of different ways that you could do this. You could, of course, use your own live email account. So if you're confident that you're happy to play around with the emails and the calendar and the contacts without actually interfering with your live data, then sure, I have no problem with you doing that. Possibly better, though, is that you could use a training environment or a demo account that you might already have set up within your organization. That probably is better than you can play around without worrying about damaging your live data. Or you could create a new Outlook profile and import my dummy data into it to have a play with. So I will just show you how you can do that now in case that's going to be the best option for you. So if you just go into your control panel, I'm just searching for that from the start menu. And then when you're in the control panel, just search for mail and that'll take you to the mail item there in the control panel. And then from there, you can set up an extra profile, which will keep everything separate from your live email account if you choose to. So if you click the show profiles button, you'll see that I've already got quite a few profiles set up. And in fact, you'll see me switching between the different characters in some of the nuggets in this course. But if you choose add to add your own profile, so let's call it um, training and click OK. If you make sure that you also, let me just move this to one side, choose the option just here, prompt for a profile to be used. That means that it will, it will ask you, do you want to use the training profile today or your live profile? But as soon as you do add a new profile, as you saw happened here, it'll try and connect an Outlook account or an email account rather to that profile. So if you do have a, a demo account or a training email address that you can use, then by all means, go ahead and connect that now. If you don't have an email address to add, then that means you can't actually send emails while you're following the course, but that might still be okay. You can still do everything else. Choose the option down here, connect to a different account, and then choose cancel. And it'll warn you, it'll say, do you really want to create a profile with no email account? Yes, I do, just click okay to that. So I've created that training account with no email account associated with it. And I know that it's going to prompt me for which profile to use. So I'm going to click OK to that and I can just close the control panel now. That means when I open up Outlook, it prompts me for a profile to be used. And that's where I see all of those different profiles that we saw a second ago. So let me just choose the training one we set up. Click OK. And it's going to be quite insistent that we really do need to add an email address to this. So we can tell it otherwise. So I'm going to choose next and say, I really, really want to set up Outlook without an email account. Thank you very much. So I'm choosing no here and I'm going to click next and say, yes, I really, really want to use Outlook without an email account. Oh, and finally, we click finish. So this gives you a completely empty um, Outlook environment. And then to give yourself some data to play with as part of the supplemental files, I have included a sample mailbox for you to import. So if you go to the file menu, choose open and export and choose import stroke export 
and then choose this option here, import from another program or file. Choose next and it's actually an Outlook data file, the .pst that I've given you to, to play with and then you need to go and browse for that supplemental file and it's called Mailbox. So if you pick that up and click open and then click next and finish then after a moment or two you'll see the uh, Outlook environment magically springing into life and you'll see you've got a load of inbox entries there with all the folders and whatnot. And if you go into the calendar, that's all been populated. And if you go into contacts and again in tasks, so that's fully populated and fully separate from your live environment. So you can have a play with all of this data to your heart's content. So we've checked you've got the right type of Outlook 2016 to be able to follow this course. We've got some dummy data so you can click along. So let's get started. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.